Sometimes in business, you just need a checklist. And that's especially true when it comes to tough processes like bookkeeping. So I created a checklist that will help you do your bookkeeping inside of FreshBooks. I call this my weekly checklist. And I do think that successful business owners should have their hands in their books at, once a week. But if you have very few transactions and a very good memory, then maybe you can get away with this being like a bi-weekly checklist or a monthly checklist. In this video, I'm going to walk through the items on the checklist. You're welcome to request a download of this document. It is a Google document. So when you ask to download it, you will receive a link to the Google Doc and you need to make a copy of it for yourself inside your Google Drive or, or on your hard drive and use it as a starting place and perhaps add things that are particular to your business um, that need to be added to this weekly workflow checklist. When you download it, be prepared to receive a series of emails over the next few weeks that are going to expound on each of these sections and give you a lot more details than I'm going to be able to explain right now. Uh, you can unsubscribe from that email list at any time. And speaking of subscribing, if you're using FreshBooks, you need to be subscribed to this YouTube channel. So go ahead and do that right now. Thank you. So you might not have known this when you started your business, but you basically signed up for watching a whole lot of YouTube videos if you're going to be doing your own bookkeeping. So sign up for my channel. Feel free to comment below if you have any questions about FreshBooks and I'll try to make a tutorial about that. That's what I do. All right, get your download and follow along. If for some reason you don't have FreshBooks yet and you're watching this video to see what bookkeeping would look like inside of FreshBooks, make sure you use my link below to get a 90 day free trial. It's the best deal on FreshBooks that you're going to get. This video is not going to be anything fancy, y'all. I'm just going to show the checklist on the screen and highlight the section that I'm talking about and talk through it. All right, so here's the checklist. I'm going to try to be zoomed in as much as I can um, on each section uh, so you can kind of read along too if you squint. Uh, but the first item is start with the easy stuff, y'all. Go to the expenses screen and properly categorize the transactions properly assign the vendors and attach receipts. Basically, when you open up your expense that your bank has imported and placed in your expenses tab, um, complete all the items, all the fields in those boxes. Easy enough, start there, go for the quick win. All right, scrolling down, now we are uh, kind of on the revenue side. So, so I call it manage your invoices and payments. You have to add payments to any invoices for which you have received full or partial payment. If you're using um, FreshBooks to invoice and accept payments. Um, that workflow is a little bit different, but sometimes you get paid outside of FreshBooks as well. So just make sure your invoices and payments are proper, your invoices are sent and your payments are properly recorded. By the way, if you want to avoid payment fees, you can use an app that integrates with FreshBooks called Melio. I have a tutorial about how to use that. I use it myself. And you do not have to pay processing fees whenever your customers pay your invoice. So note which invoices have not been paid and follow up with those people don't, who, if they haven't paid you. Uh, make sure that the invoices are really unpaid and come up with a plan to uh, reach out, reach back out to those customers. Um, if you have income that is not in FreshBooks yet, but has been deposited in your bank account, you're gonna have to enter that. You can either enter it as an invoice or you can use the other income section, which you'll find in the payments tab. So this type of stuff might be like affiliate income teachable course income, even the 10 cents you earn from your business savings account, um, that deposit is not going to, the bank connection does not have a place to put that in FreshBooks, so you have to create the uh, other income or invoice transaction for that. If you have deposits in your bank account that are net of processing fees, think like Shopify, Teachable, Stripe, Etsy, anything that like if you sell something for 10 bucks, you only show $9.00. 72 cents in your bank account, um, that's that's because there's a, there's a processing fee. You're going to have to enter your revenue as the gross amount, so $10 in the case I just said, um, and then hand enter the expenses for the payment processing fees and any refunds. Um, I created a very detailed tutorial about the income importer integration. Um, that doesn't work with all scenarios. Um, I specifically talk about the how to import your Stripe transactions in this in that tutorial, but I think it's worth a watch if you have other things kind of like Stripe. Um, you will at least get a feel for what I mean when I say you've got to put your gross receipts in and your fees 
to then be able to properly reconcile your bank account. If, if you do not do that, you'll never be able to reconcile your bank account properly. All right, moving right along. My next step is to tell you to go to your bank reconciliation screen and only reconcile a couple transactions. Do not reconcile your whole bank account. All I want you to reconcile is any intercompany movement and you're going to mark it as a transfer. There's going to be a green button you're going to hit and you're going to change it from match to transfer. And you're going to have to do that from both sides. So if you move money from checking to savings, for instance, that's a, that's a classic example, um, you have to do that both for your checking account side and your savings account side. Same thing for paying off credit card balances with your business checking account. That's a bank. Think of your credit card as like a, a, a bank account as well. It's putting stuff into FreshBooks, but those payments that um, the, the paying off the balances uh, have to be marked as transfers. You're going to also mark any owner's draws or distributions, if depending on the terminology de is dependent upon your business structure, but basically any money that you're paying yourself that's not payroll, you have to go in and mark that to owner's equity. When you do these things, there should be a little light gray transaction on the right side of the bank rec screen. Those are the fresh books. Those are the entries that are like in fresh books. The left side is what the bank says you have. Um, and those entries should disappear from the right side. The little light gray entries. Note, the reason to do this is because these items, your transfers between accounts and your, your the, the owner's draws that you have, don't belong on the profit and loss statement. But the bank reconciliation screen is the only place that you can move them to the balance sheet. Otherwise, um, the, the sort of the default position is FreshBooks has that um, doesn't, doesn't really know what it is. And so when it sees money coming out of your account, it thinks it's an expense and it doesn't have a guess as to what it's categorized. So it calls it uncategorized expense. But nothing should ever, ever, ever be in uncategorized expense. So we're going to get rid of that right away. We're going to put them in the right spot. You might be tempted to reconcile the rest of your account. Don't do it. Just do those things. Follow this workflow. It will it will help you, I promise. All right, moving right along, I want you to do a preliminary check of your profit and loss report um, and make sure you set it to your proper basis, cash or accrual. Um, check that nothing is in uncategorized expenses or um, there's also a default category that FreshBooks gives us called personal. Um, if anything is in either of those, you're going to end up going back and finding out what's in there and, and fixing it. Um, this, another side note, I'm full of side notes today. Um, FreshBooks has this default account called personal and you should never, ever use it. And this is important. This is me motivating you. You as a business owner have to learn a little bit about accounting. And there is no, no thing, there's no account called personal on your profit and loss statement. It should never be. It is a basic accounting concept. Um, personal transactions are money you're taking out. You're taking equity out of your company when you uh, use your business account for a personal transaction and it belongs in the balance sheet, not the profit and loss statement. Um, please keep learning these basic um, accounting concepts. All right. The other thing I want you to do while you're on this preliminary check of your profit and loss statement is make sure that your chart of accounts, the, the, the cat, well, chart of accounts, also it's also called categories in FreshBooks, um, make sure they're not growing unnecessarily. I always talk about the keep it simple, silly, KISS system, right? So if you do a month to month comparison and you see that over time, you, you know, you only had 10 different categories in January, but by November, you've got 20. Why? What's going on? Can you combine any of those? Um, it likely many can be combined. Um, and if not, just make sure you have a good reason for it. It's easy to just kind of forget what you had done the month before and pick something else that's kind of close. And so then you're just adding accounts that don't need to be there. Um, so you want to keep that simple. So double check that make sure those accounts aren't growing. And then just do a gut check, y'all. Make sure that it feels right. When you look at that income number, does that seem right? Uh, it's kind of easy to overstate income in bookkeeping softwares if you don't know what you're doing. Um, maybe you have a, a whole lot more expenses than you thought you did. Maybe that's because some, some expenses are not categorized right. Maybe you didn't properly categorize a refund correctly. Just make sure things are feeling right. You know your business better than anybody. 
and you are smart. You have a you have a sense about these things. So there's nothing wrong with just kind of saying, yeah, that sort of is looking right. Um, we're not done, but um, we're, we're going to run a final report. But um, just make sure that it is looking right, so that way you can go change stuff and, and investigate if it doesn't. All right, scrolling down again. Next up, run your expenses report and group it by merchant and make sure all your merchants are correctly named. I call this the expenses by merchant report. It's not an official name, but it's basically the expense report with a certain level of filters applied. I have a tutorial about that. Um, and when you download the um, document, you'll have a link to go to that tutorial. Um, when you run this report, just make sure that the individual merchants are set to the same category. Um, or if they're not set to the same category, make sure there is a good reason why. Amazon could be a good um, explanation, like a good example of that. Maybe some of it's office supplies, maybe some of it is supplies for clients, and so you want to name it something completely different. Maybe it's, you know, it's not office supplies at all. Um, but there's a lot of categories like GoDaddy might also, you know, needs to always be website expense or advertising or whatever you decide to put it as. It probably should, that, that probably shouldn't change. So um, just make sure that you are categorizing your merchants properly and also make sure that all your merchants are named properly. Don't have Amazon with a lowercase, Amazon with an uppercase, Amazon all caps, Amazon A-M-Z-N, which sometimes that, that's how it comes through on the bank um, imports. So name them properly, go fix anything that is not. Um, and if you want to do it in bulk, if you want to uh, do that renaming in bulk, I have a tutorial for how to do bulk action edits in FreshBooks. All right, continuing to move on, check your specific project profitability reports and make sure that you have classified all the expenses to those reports. I'll tell you why. Um, you don't want to go back and remember which expenses go to which project because I promise you're going to forget um, but more importantly, um, if you think, oh, I'll go back and do that later, but you have finished going through the checklist and you reconcile those transactions, anytime you make a change to an expense, it, unre it unreconciles it. And you're going to get frustrated. You're going to get confused. You're going to say, Kate tells me I have to do this reconciliation thing. And it seems like it's squirrely and messed up. So don't reconcile until the very end. Make sure you put your expenses to the proper projects if that is important to you, if that's how you're using FreshBooks, do that now. All right, I had to zoom out a little bit, but we are finally at this big, hairy step. Um, after all the previous steps are complete, you can reconcile your bank account. Um, you're going to be given a prompt from FreshBooks that says, go ahead and match all these transactions. Um, I think you need to get very, very experienced and very, very comfortable with FreshBooks before you are doing that. If you're watching this video, you're probably a somewhat new user of FreshBooks. So I would hit skip on that first menu when it's going to try to make those reconciliation suggestions for you. If you're doing your bookkeeping weekly, your reconciliation list is never going to get overwhelmingly long. Okay, so just hit skip and don't let them help you <laughs> do it. Do it the slower method and just go step by step and make sure you understand what's happening. All right, so a couple of things to watch for. If you had an expense refund, you spent $99 on something and you returned it and you got $99 back, you have to mark it as a refund, but you have to mark it to the exact category that you categorized it to. Um, you can search for that in your expenses tab and to help you remember, okay, did I put that to um, advertising or website expense or you know whatever um, and make sure that if it was marked as billable you have to know whether you um, had, had put it to, to COGS you're going to be given a, a, a box on that refund selection was this COGS or not and you have to basically call the refund the exact match as to what you had originally categorized it as all right you might see some other additional deposits that are income. Hopefully you caught them all in that second step on this checklist and you've added all your little extra monies coming in. Um, but if you haven't, if there's anything on that left side in the bank account that was a deposit, what was it for? Was it affiliate income? Was it uh, a tip? <laughs> I don't know. Go figure it out and you're going to have to 
make sure you enter that into FreshBooks so it shows up on the right side so you can reconcile. The final check I recommend is to run your trial balance report. That's going to be in the report section. And I suggest going to get your uh, bank statements, get your most recent one. Usually they're like at the end of the month if it's a, a checking your savings account. Um, but run your trial balance for the end of for this for the ending balance date of your bank statement and the reason this you have to do it this way FreshBooks should show us the individual account balances on the balance sheet but they don't um, they combine it so if you have a checking account maybe you have a payroll account lots of businesses will have that um, and maybe you have a savings account well if you're on your balance sheet it's just going to show the total combined number of cash and so you're having to do some sort of mental math or mental math or you know hand math or excel math or calculator math to figure out the breakdown. So instead, forget that, don't go to the balance sheet, go to the trial balance and it will show you your balances for those particular accounts. Make sure they match to what your bank statement says. This brings me great comfort um, that FreshBooks truly does have all the inflows and outflows from the bank account into FreshBooks. All right, we're scrolling down again. Uh, getting to the very end, uh, you're going to run your profit and loss statement again. Do this on a monthly basis where you, uh, at the end of the month, where you save it as a PDF. So you have those snapshots in time. I, I recommend that. Um, you can date it for the last day of the month. I use a naming convention when I'm saving stuff on my computer where I put the, the year first, like 2022, and then the month. Um, that allows me to have a folder called reports and it will go in order uh, 202201, that's January, 202202, that's February, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so when you're on this uh, profit and loss report, uh, check for trends and make sure they're trending the right way. Celebrate any positive trends like more revenue, more in net income, and uh, decreases in your costs. Um, and then if you notice negative trends, um, go for a walk. Think about it. Use the data to start to propel your business forward. Um, come up with that battle plan to improve any negative trends. What do you need to do to keep increasing that revenue? Why is your revenue stagnant? Why are your expenses increasing? But you know the truth, the numbers don't lie, and so you can come up with a solid plan. Scrolling down to the last section, y'all, run your balance sheet report. What I want you to look for here is your owner's equity section and your credit card liability accounts. Make sure they've moved in the right direction after you've classified them from that bankrupt screen way back early in the checklist. Um, if you took money out of your company, your owner's equity is going to decrease. If you put a money into your company, um, then your owner's equity is going to increase. Um, if you made a big credit card payment and if you had some credit card debt, that liability account needs to go down. Another thing to check on that, make sure your accounts receivable um, you know, matches the invoices that you have outstanding. Um, one kind of complicated issue that a lot of businesses don't really know about or understand, when you are making debt repayments, um, only the interest portion is a business expense. So um, you have to use the journal entry feature to properly categorize that. You, you or your free accountant user will have the ability to um, make those journal entries. If you want to do it yourself, I have a tutorial about how you can kind of get these accountant features for free. Um, go ahead and watch that if you are comfortable making those journal entries yourself. Um, and if not, you can uh, get a FreshBooks accounting partner to help you. The FreshBooks has a directory. I am a member of that directory, but there are plenty of others of us. And they'd be able to help you if you weren't confident in, in that. All right, I'm scrolling down and we're at the bottom of the checklist. Congrats. You made it. So now you are more equipped to use FreshBooks and have an up-to-date and accurate picture of your business finances. A word of caution, if you've listened to this entire video and you kind of made a list of like nine or 10 other things that you envision needing to do for your business bookkeeping each week, there's a good chance that you should not be using FreshBooks for your business. FreshBooks is not built for all small businesses. They are very clear about that, um, but you can comment below or contact me and I'll give you my honest opinion about what software solution would be a good fit for your business. It might be FreshBooks or if not, I'll let you know. All right, I'm signing off for now. I'm Kate Josephine Johnson and I help businesses build their business legacy.